Welcome to the Hardcore Closer Podcast. I'm Ryan Steumann, founder of HardcoreCloser.com, and this podcast is all about helping you, the salesperson, close more sales. And look, whether you're selling cars, homes, financial services, consulting, whatever it is that you sell, this podcast is dedicated to help you generate higher quality leads, increase your closing ratios, and show you how to charge premium fees for the items you sell so you can get paid what you're worth. Welcome to episode number 62 of the Hardcore Closer podcast. And look, I'm really glad that you're here. If this is your first time, be sure to check out previous episodes. And, and look, do me a favor. I need you to go leave me a review on iTunes. Here's the deal. It, it's like I've got this goal to reach 300 million salespeople. I can't do it alone. I need your help. And this podcast is one of the ways uh, that I'm going to reach my goal is I'm going to reach as many people right now. We've got, uh, I think, so. 20 or 50,000, let's say 20,000 conservatively people a month that listen to this. To some people, that's a lot. To some, it's not. We got a long ways to go. And the way to get there is to give a review on iTunes because then iTunes will show this show to more people to where more salespeople like yourself can hear this show. And it gives me a chance to change people's minds. And when you change people's minds, you change their lives. And that's what I'm all about here, the Hardcore Closer podcast. So I'm asking you to leave a review on the show, not just because like I want you to review me. It's like, hey, tell me how good of a job I'm doing. I don't really care. I'm kind of like Howard Stern when it comes to that. I don't really give a shit, but I want to help other people. There's somebody out there right now that's struggling. There's somebody out there right now that needs to hear this message today. There's somebody out there right now that is where you were before you found this show, and I think you at least owe it to them to try to get them here by leaving me a review on iTunes. Like my buddy right here, Derek Nelson, I actually know this guy. It's the first one that I think I've actually known the person. Uh, five stars. We always ask for five stars. But why would you want to give anything left or less? Uh, but Derek Nelson says, uh, value bombs with every episode. So you can find Derek on Facebook. We're connected there. He usually, I think he shared something on my page yesterday, actually. He said, I've listened to just about all these podcasts and each and every one of them brings real value. If you run a business, are in sales, marketing, et cetera, uh, you'd be doing yourself a disservice if you didn't listen to this and follow Ryan's advice. Derek Nelson, financial foundation system, helping people maximize their savings without gambling in the Wall Street casino. See, now that's what the fuck I see. You can tell that Derek is an avid follower, not just the fact that he says listen to all these episodes, but you can see after he talked about the value there, he pitched his business, right? He, <laughs> I'm just reading this shit as we go along. I don't read any of this beforehand. I just, we do everything that I do in one take. And I just read stuff right off the computer screen, uh, this little testimonial that we add to it in the format that they're just put, being completely transparent. It, like Robert sends me a list of five things. 30 seconds later, I spit five things out, and then we turn it into a podcast. I'm sure he thinks that it's some sort of black magic or whatever the fuck. I know that's what Amy thinks too. She's like, you got to fucking curse to be able to do that shit. That's unreal. The fact is I can do it. And, and but So I don't read these things, but I think it's awesome that Derek's like, hey, Derek Nelson, financial foundation system, helping people maximize their savings without gambling in the Wall Street casino. You see, that's, like, that's badass. That's some cold-ass, hardcore closer salesmanship. You think about the dude gave a review, and in the review, he also pitched his business because he knows, like, hey, look, shit, if Ryan's going to pick this thing up and he's going to read my review, and there's 20,000 people a month that are going to listen to each episode. Mind you, I'm sorry, I should have been more specific about that. But, and I think we have 62 episodes now, so there's going to be 20,000 people that listen to each episode. And so from there, it's a good idea to probably get my pitch in front of 20,000 people. So good job, Derek. Fucking dig it, man. I believe you're in the entourage too. If you're not, you should get your ass in there. And let's talk about that for a minute before we get into our, our episode today. Listen, what if I told you that I could help you double your income in the next 180 days? What if I told you I could help you double your income in the next 90 days? What if you could double your income in a day? Now, I'm not saying that there's a possibility to, to get rich overnight. And I'm not saying that there is the ability to uh, make fast money in this world. You know, you've got to work for what you earn. But I had a client that joined the entourage just last week, make $220,000 in four days after joining. Now, we're talking about cash. I seen the check. Here's why. He learned how to make a funnel, something that his investors had never heard of or seen or even grasped the concept before. He learned how to make a funnel. He went make a funnel for them, and they gave him that money to, to promote their business. Now, think about that for a second. This guy comes to me. He's already running a good business. This guy's already making you know close to a million dollars a year. Okay, so he's not broke. He's not some like guy that's starving. You know, that's that's you know selling shit on the street corner. It's not. He's going door to door selling steaks. He's not that guy. He's making a lot of money. 
And he comes to me and I teach him how to make these funnels. And his mind was blown, right? This is somebody making a lot of money. His mind was blown. He took the concept back, went and built funnels, which took him about two hours to make the two funnels he made, took them back to the people. They gave him like over 200 grand. Like I've seen the checks, $225,000 they handed to him. And then I met him two days later uh, in person. He joined the tribe. And so I want you to think about that. Like anything is possible. And, and that's what, like what you can do in one day, you can do in two days, right? So maybe he goes back the next day. I haven't followed up with him since then. I, uh, he's been busy. Obviously, he's got some money he's got to spend on his deal. But I haven't followed up with him since then because this was just last week. And uh, literally, he was just here Friday, and we record these on Tuesdays. And so he was just here last week, and I just want you to understand that that can happen for you. I can't make it happen for you. It's up to you to make it happen, but it happened for him. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't it happen to you if you're willing to do the work? He didn't just learn how to make a funnel and then just like, eh, okay, now what? He learned how to make a funnel and figured out an angle, which is what salespeople do, and he went and used that angle to sell his people into giving them $225,000. The only thing that's separating you and a million dollars if you don't already have it is your angle and your ability to work towards making that angle work for you. And so that's what the entourage is about. We teach how to make funnels, teach how to run Facebook ads, we teach how to be a better salesperson, we teach how to be a more effective marketer, we teach how to scale your business. It's not just like one size fits all training. It's not just sales training. It's not just marketing training. It's not just Facebook ads. It's everything that you could possibly need to be running a business online and off. Whether you sell mortgages, real estate, uh, this guy, gentleman I'm speaking of right now, he sells uh, like shoes and stuff. He's a wholesaler. He sells like like shoes and shakers, shoes and handbags and all this stuff, right? Make a, there's dudes out there busting their ass 90 hours a week selling cars. No offense, I'm just be real with you, making $70,000 a year. And this dude's selling women's shoes Al Bundy style on the fucking internet making a million. And probably don't work that much. He really probably don't. He had time to fucking drive up here and hang out with me and have breakfast with his wife and his kid and me and we hung out at the country club. So I want you to think about that. There's no excuse to not be the best. There's no excuse not to align yourself with the best. Look, to join the Break Free Academy Entourage, it's $297 a month. If you don't have $297 extra dollars at the end of the month, do yourself a favor and get the fuck out of the sales game because you don't belong in it. Closers got money. Closers make money. And closers want to be surrounded with other closers. If that's you, to join the Break Free Academy Entourage, man, we've got 400 badass people back there. You remember that movie 300? Well, we got 400, motherfucker. It's like seven-minute abs, bitch. We got the whole network. And listen, dude, I'll make my guarantee right here on the air. I'm in on Facebook too. If you join Break Free Academy Entourage and work and do the work for an entire year and you don't get at least $2,500 of profit from the program, I'll not only give you your fucking money back, I'll tattoo a fucking dick. I'm, I'm not tattooing shit. I'll draw a dick. On my forehead for you. It's not going to fucking happen. There's no way that you can come to me and say that you're struggling in your business and you need help. And I'm not going to leave you fucking behind. It's not going to happen. There's no way that you can't learn. There's no way that you can learn this shit and go out and do it in the marketplace for an entire year and not make at least 2,500 bucks. It's impossible. If you're a lazy fuck and you don't do anything with it, then you probably lose your money. But if you're just willing to take a little bit of action, you're going to make money from it. There's people that make, I've got a client that quit his job because they didn't want to let him build funnels, quit his job, went to the next fucking job and demanded a half a million dollar fucking advance and got it. He ain't made a half a million dollars in fucking a year in his life. And he just went in there like Kanye fucking West, get my money, Def Jam. And they fucking forked it over. He hit me up and he's like, oh shit, Stu, it worked. I got the, I got the check. <laughs> like, yeah, you know what it is. Listen, these are the people that are in the entourage. These are the people that are in there because my tribe members are in the entourage too. The million dollar earners, they're in the entourage too, helping people out. They're the leaders in there, the coaches. We've got a, a, a mortgage guy in there right now that's helping out the mortgage people in the entourage. He did, he did $200 million in mortgages last year. Not his company, not the place where he works. He did it. He did it. So you need to think about that. Do you want to align yourself with, with, with those kind of people? BraveFreeAcademy.com forward slash entourage. Or you want to hang out with average people. So let's talk about this episode. Okay. Let's get into it here. I get out of my, get out of my entourage thing. I'm really, I'm real passionate about helping people, you know, and, and one of my biggest struggles in life, ladies and gentlemen, is that I'm not formally educated enough to articulate my point at all times, 
right? Simple folks understand me, but smart folks, I confuse the shit out of. And I have a massive ton of ADD. But I'm street smart enough to be able to put some cool shit together, and that's what I've done with Entourage, and that's what we're going to do on this episode. We're going to talk about five simple steps to building a referral network from scratch. And uh, first, let's talk about a referral network. Like, what is that? Now, I know you go to like meetup.com or meetup, meet, what, whatever the fuck, right? Meet, meet men together, whatever the fuck it is. Meetup.com, the, uh, the professional hookup site. And, you know, there's networking events and, and referral networks, and there's probably even an event called the referral networking event or some shit over there. I mean, you can find just about anything over there. But that's not what I'm talking about for the sake of this episode. I'm not talking about referral networking. I'm not talking about going to a networking event. I'm not talking about a power lunch where you listen to fucking Patty with fucking Vaisalas talk about how these shakes changed their life. That's complete bullshit. If Patty was a baller in Vaisalas, she wouldn't be sitting there next to me telling me about how this shake changed her fucking life. She'd be on the fucking infomercials like Shalene is fucking killing it. Have you seen that? Like Shalene, the beach body chick, dude, she's got her own infomercials and shit right now. That's how you know somebody's making way too damn much money in MLM. But congratulations, are she cool people? And so here's the thing. A referral network is a go-to source that you can give deals to that give deals to you. And there is a mutual benefit to the relationship that you share. And so in other words, if uh, you are a loan officer, a referral network might consist of real estate agents, divorce attorneys, uh, uh, let's say real estate agents, divorce attorneys, financial planners, stockbrokers, uh, real estate investors, landlords, and maybe uh, someone that does something for veterans because, you know, we're really big into doing the, the VA loans, at least the, the mortgage people I work for, uh, you know, because we're this alpha personality, one of the things we do to give back is we are real heavily giving back to the people that have been in the armed forces. And one of the ways we do that is helping them make sure that we take care of them with their VA loans. So if you're a veteran, you listen to this, you think about using your VA loan, just send me a, uh, an email, ryan at hardcorecloser.com. I'll make sure that I put you in touch with the right mortgage person that won't fuck you over. How about that? You know, catch me outside. How about that? You, you laid your life on the line uh, for us and I'll put someone who's willing to lay their life on the line to make sure that you get the house that you want. So all you got to do is just email me if you're a vet. Uh, Ryan at hardcorecloser.com. You got to have your DD-214. You don't have to email that to me. I don't need to see it, but I'm saying you're going to need your DD-214 if you've never done it before. And uh, if this is your second VA loan, then uh, there is a little additional funding fee that the government makes you pay, but there are some ways around it. That's why you want to make sure you get with my people. So uh, back to the story here. If you're in a referral network, it's people that can give you business, but that you can give them business too. So think if you're a loan officer, uh, then you can give the real estate agents business because oftentimes people may call you first to get pre-approved for a loan before they go and look for a home and you could intercept that and send it to the right real estate agent. So a referral network is a mutual beneficial network of people conspiring to do business together. We'll just use that fancy proper definition for the sake of this show. Okay. But I want you to think of a referral network as two sided. You give them, they give you. I don't want you to think of a referral network as just a place that you can be a receiver, right? You're not a receiver, okay? You need to be a person that gives. you got to let it flow through you. You give some, you get some, right? you got to let it flow through you. So we're going to talk about who should be in your, your, your network today. But more importantly, I'm going to talk about how I've built the referral network that I have. I often tell people the biggest benefit of joining Break Free Academy Entourage or the tribe or whatever program we may have going on in the future, the biggest benefit to joining that is the network. And the cool thing is I've built this network from scratch for you already. It's already done. I built it. It's already ready already. And all you got to do is plug into it. But there's a lot of people that, you know, they like to do things the hard way. So they want to build one from scratch. And then there's a lot of people I've go on these podcast interviews and stuff and they ask me how I did it. You know, I've built this uh, Break Free Academy entourage at this point has about 400 people in the program. Uh, the tribe has about 70 people in the program. And uh, because that's like a horn or something, not sure what's going on out there. Uh, but the, the uh, tribe has about 70 people in the program and it's a referral network. That's what a mastermind is, a place where you like, uh, there's this morning alone, uh, Robin Crane, one of my tribe members, asked the tribe, hey, we're buying a house in Florida. 
Uh, they're going to move from New Jersey to Florida. Uh, who could do our loan and who can help us out? And in the tribe, there's Danielle Nielsen, who's a real estate agent in Tampa, right there where they want to move. And then there was Brandy uh, Whitmore, Whitmire, who's like right there in Dallas, who can do the loan in Florida. And like, boom, she got everything she needed without ever having to leave our own thing. And guess what? She's going to get the house she wants. Uh, Brandy will make some money off of the, the mortgage. And Danielle will make some money from the real estate transaction. And all because the right network was built. I see people every single day post back there in the entourage, hey, who has an agent here? Or where's a loan officer here? Or who sells cars here? Or hey, I, I need to get insurance. Who could I use? Or, or B2B services. Like People are trading business all day, every day because they trust the network that I've built. So I'm going to share with you today how I've built that network. Uh, but first thing that you should ask yourself is like, who should be in your network? In a sense of like, write a list of people that you'd like to have down. Maybe you don't know a divorce attorney. Right? Maybe you want a financial planner in your network. You don't know one of those. Maybe you need a merchant services person in your network, but you don't know that person. Maybe you need somebody that sells supplements in your life and you don't know that person. Still write that position down. You need to think, who do I want in my network? Because that's what I did. I wrote a network down. I was like, if I was going to build a network with these key positions, which positions would I need? And so I think that's important. So number one uh, step and, and think about my referral network. Just one more thing before we get into this. My referral network, like our biggest group on Facebook, Sales Talk with Sales Pros, is 55,000 people. Our, uh, uh, we have a group called Sales Pitches Galore. It's a 5,000 person network. We have uh, the Break Free Academy members, which is for people who are actually graduates. There's over 800 people in that group. I've built some badass referral networks from scratch. So when I tell you this stuff today, I'm telling you from firsthand experience. Not some hypothetical bullshit like a lot of posers on other podcasts uh, would try to present to you. So number one, provide above and beyond service. Listen, if you're going to get referrals, you got to be good at what you do. And look, I'm just be real with you guys. It don't take much these days to be good at what you do. And people's expectations have been lowered so much. And it's sad. I mean, we are slowly progressing towards idiocracy. Let's Can, can we just be real for it? Can I rant with you? For, can, I, can I get a fucking minute? To get some shit off my – we are slowly moving towards idiocracy. Like dumb people are breeding at a staggering rate because they're not smart enough to realize that when you have kids, they cost money and they didn't fucking plan for that. But then the government takes care of them and they don't have to get smarter. They don't have to get – anyway, it's like people – it doesn't take much to fucking be better than everybody else because everything on this planet is fucking average. Whoever the divine being, whether it be the Mormon god, the Muslim god, or the Southern Baptist god, or sweet baby Jesus from Talladega Nights, whoever it was that did did the math that coded this planet because if you think about it, everything on this planet operates according to code, a math code that was put here. You want to go to the moon? It's all about doing the math and scaling it. You want to make a million dollars? It's all about doing the math and scaling it. Everything on this planet was based around math, but that math exists much like everything else in business, in life, and everything else exists to be average. They want the average of the mass people here in America. They want the average of the people on earth. They want the average. And so that math is done to be average. So for you to do above and beyond doesn't fucking take much because so many people just say, ah, fuck it and become average. You think about it. When you're working out, your body shuts down at 40%. It doesn't even let you get the average fucking amount of energy out before it starts shutting down. And that's, that's the average person at 40%, right? The unaveraged person shuts down at 20%. That's why they don't work out at all. The average person just expects shit to be right. I'm in a situation right now where I set some expectations up front and the average motherfucker that I'm having to deal with, he, he fucking, he just assumed and, and, and just uh, made the assumption that everything was going to be the way that it was because he's average and I'm trying to be above average setting expectations, but oftentimes average motherfuckers don't get that. So the reason why I say this is if you want to be above average, it doesn't take much because everything on this planet is trying to pull you back to being average. You get a lot of money. All of a sudden you decide to spend it. You're back to average. You have a great month. You make a lot of money. The next month you make no money. You have a shitty month. You're back to average. Everything on this fucking planet is trying to average you out. And so you got to do more than the regular person to be average. I just read a study yesterday where the average salary in the state of California is a hundred fucking thousand dollars. Now, mind you, there's some rich fucking people out there, so it averages out a little high. But still, if you make a hundred grand right now, you is shit. You're average. I say those of us that make a millions that have less than an eight figure income per year are average. I know to some of you, you're like, how the fuck you think millionaire elitists are going to be average? I'm telling you, once you get here, you find out that it's not all rainbows and sunshine. There's the occasional hailstorm and tornado too. And so. To go above and beyond, it doesn't take much, but you got to be willing to do it. That might include answering the phone on the weekends. 
sending closing gifts, such as if you're a real estate agent or loan officer, you go to yourfreealarm.com, send them a, a free security system for closing business with you. Just write yourself down as the referral. We'll even send you a little bit of kickback, a little referral money on the back end for helping us out. It's yourfreealarm.com. But you can do things like that to just provide above and beyond service that don't cost you any money. It just shows that you did a little bit more than the fucking average person. If you show up and you do a lot more than the average person, then obviously you'll get the exponential respect from your people as well. But if you provide average or sub-average service, it'll never fucking happen. They're not going to send you their friends because they're like, meh. Like when someone's like, hey, do you know somebody who's doing – let's just stick with the mortgage scenario for this show. Hey, do you know somebody who's doing mortgages? They're at a cocktail party. One friend says the other, hey, do you know somebody doing mortgages? The other, If you had an eh experience, they're going to be like, oh, our guy was all right. All right. Is that what you fucking want from your people when they're asked about what you do for a living? Is that what you want? Because here's what I want. If somebody's at a cocktail party and they say, hey, you know what? We're thinking about getting a mortgage. I want to go, you got to fucking use Ryan Stuman. Ryan, oh my God, he gave us a free security alarm. He came to our house twice. He took our kids to the fucking Catholic church and had a priest bless them. Then he took some guacamole to the church. He had the priest bless the guacamole. We had holy guacamole at our fucking closing table. You got to fucking know that Ryan Stuman. Here, I've got his card. Let's call him right now. Let's get him on the fucking phone. God damn it, I love Ryan Stuman, right? That's what I want him to fucking feel like. And the thing is, you don't have to really do that much these days to get people pumped up about you. You really don't. Just got to go a little bit above and beyond. Number two, give more than they ask for. That sink in. A lot of folks don't understand that. Give more than they ask for. So one of the things that we do at Hardcore Closers when somebody joins uh, Entourage or the tribe or whatever, we give them bonuses. Hey, man, here's some bonuses for making the decision and trusting us. They didn't expect them. And the bonuses are usually five to ten thousand more dollars than what they spent. They don't expect it. They don't know what it's coming. We just give it to them above and beyond. Six months from now, we promise them that, hey, you know what? You know, we don't make any promises for income, but we say, hey, man, you can't lose with this. You're going to make money. In the next 90 days, they triple their income. They're like, dude, you said that this might work for me. I have tripled my income. Dude, we delivered more than they ever expected or asked for. I always say upadi, right? Under promise, over deliver. And I think that if if you – and this is, this is a struggle I face because of my heart in. But my whole thought process is if I can sell worst case scenario, I'm a real closer, right? If I can sell low expectations and worst case scenario, then truly I'm a closer, right? Like let's just be realistic here. No, ex no irrational exuberance, no, no, oh, yeah, we can definitely make you a millionaire. If I can sell worst case scenario, then truly I'm a closer. But if I can sell worst case scenario and then deliver more than they even expected before I sold them worst case scenario, then I've got a referral person. I've got a raving fan. I've got someone who is the fucking Ryan Stuman business cheerleader, right? And that's what you want as well. Number three, show people you care. This is a big one too. Uh, these days, it's not as easy as it used to be because we have a lot of people that, that I support and our company here supports. But I used to remember all my clients' kids' names. And, you know, what part of the country they were from and where they lived and what they did for a living. And, and it's because I know that if people know that you know them, they know that you care. Oftentimes I see people all the time. They're like, man, I just got that guy's name and I can't remember what it was. And that's fucked up, right? Because that means you don't care. Because if you cared about that guy, you remember his name. I used to have that problem. Let me, let me explain something to you that, that happened to me. And this will help you out tremendously because I know a lot of us shake hands with somebody and immediately forget their name. And there's a reason for that. There is a reason for that. Okay, it's part of it's the world's trying to keep you fucking average. Fuck average, okay? But here's how you show people you care. You remember their name, first of all. When I shake hands with somebody, I always say their name back to them. Hey, what's going on? I'm Bob. Hey, Bob, excited to meet you. I'm Ryan Stuman. Bob, where are you from, Bob? I fucking say their name. I don't give a fuck if it annoys them or not. And the truth is it doesn't annoy them. You know why? Because A, most of them realize I'm trying to remember their name and I'm working hard to do it and they appreciate that. I'm showing them I care. And number two, a person's name is the sweetest sound of their fucking ears. You identify a person. You show a person, you know, you're sitting at the club or the restaurant. And somebody sees you, Ryan, Ryan, you get excited, right? That's just what happens. And so when I meet somebody, I shake their hand. I say their name back to them and I show them that I'm intentionally working my ass off to remember their name in a world of motherfuckers that don't remember names. That's just a small way to show people you care. And here's a little trick. I get messages in the DM all the time. No dick pics, you fucks. Get messages in the DM all the time. And people will write me stuff. 
And I show them I care because, you know, hey, I remember some shit that we talked about before or some stuff that they posted on Facebook before or some things that we were chatting about last time. I show them I care. It's like, hey, man, I remember that. How'd you get that fixed? You show people you care, they'll want to help you out with your business. If they know you care about them, they'll start to care about you. Number four, you got to earn the right to ask for referrals. And when I say earn the right to ask for referrals, I mean, like, you, if you're delivering above and beyond service, you're showing people that you care, you're giving them more than they ask for, uh, I believe that that all com combines to the right to ask for referrals. A, a lot of people are scared to ask for referrals because they don't feel like they deserve the sale. You know anybody like that? Maybe you. I don't know. But I'm saying that there's a lot of people out there that, that don't ask for referrals and don't build a referral network because they feel internally like they don't deserve it. And they damn sure haven't asked, uh, they haven't earned the right to ask for them. And so when I say earn the right to ask referrals, like if you know you did a good job, and then the way, and you think, well, how do you know you do a good job, right? If they're fucking happy, if they leave the place fucking hopping and skipping like a two year old with a sucker, right? Like they, like, you know, you get your little two year old sucker, they start, or at least mine do, boy. Like, well, mine are four and five now, but back when they were two, you give them a sucker, boy. They just start skipping around, happy as hell, man. You'd think they were putting ecstasy in them damn blow pops. Maybe they put cocaine in there. It's called a blow pop for a reason. I don't know. I haven't ever tried one. Uh, I need to check that out. Maybe I don't really like cocaine, though. I know some of you savages do. That's not really my thing. I'm not a. I'm not an uppers guy. I got enough energy as it is, dude. It is ten in the morning. I've been up since four, and I'm still fired the fuck up. And I already done CrossFit and meditated today, so I do not need any uppers. We all know if you've read my book, what happened the last time I tried uppers and fucking shit killed me. That's what I wound up in prison for. All right, so earning the right to ask for referrals, okay? It's important. If you know that they love you, if you know that they're happy, wouldn't you want them to make their friends and people that they know happy as well? Don't you think that they'd like for their friends and confidants to fucking feel that same pleasurable moment that they feel with you as well? Of course they would, but you've got to earn the right for that, okay? Number five, the last one, is you got to make sure you're giving referrals to others. There's a book by uh, some dude called The Go-Giver. I think it's Bob Bird, and uh, that's real sad because I think I've had him on my past podcast. And, uh, but, you know, it's been, it's been, that's been five or six years, but I'm trying my best here to show you I care, Bob, but I'm pretty sure Go-Giver's Bob's book. And uh, if you look on the Hardcore Closer blog, actually, Robert, if you'll just uh, – when you do the edit on this, just link to it on uh, on the webpage. It's on hardcorecloser.com so they can listen to it. He's a great guy, older gentleman. And the reason why I share that, share that is he's got a book called The Go-Giver. And I'll probably end up writing a, a, a book review on it. It's a great book, and he's talking about you know giving first. You know The famous – I know it's Zig Z Ziglar. We don't say that in the South. We say Zig Ziglar. That's like what I've said my whole entire lesson with the people at the uh, – like around here. It's like I live in the same city where he, he died. That's like just how we said it around here. I don't, I don't know why uh, it's always been that way down here. But like I know people say Zig these days, but it was like Zig Ziglar. Anyway, so uh, – or at least that's what I've always called him. But he, he had a saying because I know there's a few of y'all that corrected me on the last show, right? But there's a uh, – uh, there's a saying from him. It's like you can have whatever it is that you want if you just help enough people get what they want. And I believe that's the number one rule to networking is you got to give referrals to others. If you help them get – and the referral may not be the form of business, right? If I'm trying to get business from a loan officer, the referral might be an introduction to a real estate agent that I think will mesh with their personality. If I'm trying to get a referral from a uh, financial advisor, I might send them a real estate agent that lists expensive homes that can connect with them and maybe provide leads for them. You see, I try to put people together because I realize the more you connect people, the more they'll want to connect you. And listen, I'm all about the law of reciprocity. If you read the book Influenced by Dr. Cialdini, uh, Robert, make sure you link the, the book review to that here. Uh, on this page as well. But if you read the book Influenced by Dr. Robert Cialdini, he talks about what's known in the uh, psychology world as the law of reciprocity. And if you give first, and this is what Zeke Ziegler's talking about, this is what Bob Berg's talking about, and this is what Robert Cialdini's talking about, and you're hearing Ryan Stuman talk about it in third person, as weird as that was to just fucking say that right now. And that is, you have to fucking lead the way giving people referrals. You, right? Like you, you have to. And if you'll just be the connector, Right. If you you go and you ask people, how can I help you? Most of the time they're going to be like, dude, do you know X? 
and if you even if you don't say yes, go find it and make the introduction. Go, dude, it's awesome. You go find the. Do you know a lawyer? What kind of business lawyer? Boom. You go look them up on LinkedIn. You connect with the lawyer, have a few talks with them. It's like, hey, man, I might have a potential referral for you. Boom. You go back. You connect them with the real estate agent or whoever it was that needed the lawyer. Problem solved. Now you look like a hero in two people's eyes. You've done what's called the law of reciprocity. You have give first, which means that the scale has been tipped and they feel like they owe you a favor so that when you ask for a referral, they go hunting for one for you. How about that? Okay, so let's go back and uh, recap these five things real quick. Number one, provide above and beyond service. Don't take much, folks. This world's full of average motherfuckers. It don't take much. Number two, give more than you ask for. If you can sell worst case scenario and set zero expectations, you're a closer. And then you're a hero when you deliver above and beyond what they even thought they were going to get in the first place. Number three, show people you care. Uh, it's real simple. Remembering people's names, treating customers like gold. Those things matter. Number four, earn the right to ask for referrals. Uh, that means going above and beyond, showing them you care, being empathetic. And uh, number five, make sure you give them referrals to others because that law of reciprocity is strong, bro. All right. Head out. Look, there's a lot of you that list is 20,000 a month and you haven't grabbed my book elevator to the top. I don't know why it's free. And the shipping is $7 and 95 cents. So for $7 and 95 cents, you can get your hand hands on like the best sales book out there. Look, I'm not knocking the other people that have written sales books. There's some great people that have written books out there, but my shit has scripts. My shit has practical things that you can do today. And my shit is modern new age shit that a lot of people don't know about other than folks that listen to this podcast. If you don't even read it, just grab the damn book because I got a stack of them I'm trying to give away to you guys, but I can't force your hand onto this, right? So we, truthfully, we've given away uh, 4,000 books so far in the last four and a half months. And uh, funny thing is we're selling more on Amazon than that, which is not my intention. I'm trying to give away the ones that I freaking printed over here. They're more expensive on Amazon, but I get it. You guys are like, hey, we're contributing to Ryan over here uh, with Amazon and, and you know we don't want to take advantage of his free shit. I made that shit for you. I, you have my permission to do some kangaroo activity. Just go to the elevator, elevatortothetop.com and get your free book. It's paperback. It's awesome. I wrote it. You're going to love it. It's got great stuff in there. And uh, dude, it's going to look good on your belt bookshelf too. And listen, why take the stairs when you can take the elevator? Elevator to the top dot com and uh, sign up buy it rub it up just make it rub it down y'all hey make sure you share this on uh the social media stuff and don't forget that damn review on itunes thanks for listening catch you next week